our young people today certainly face a difficult test in growing up in our society and thus we need to have lessons like to this uh, building better young people both for their sake but also for us older people's sake uh, so that when we deal with our children as they're growing up we can help them out as well and help them grow and build to the type of individuals that they need to be glad that brother brad green is with us and his wife april they're not going to get to stay very long they're on their way over to have to go over to daytona but uh he is a young man he is working with brother kent bailey at lenore city uh, congregation and uh, you've got to say something for him uh, having to put up with uh, Brother Bailey. I mean, that's uh, for all of you who know Brother Kent. He's a graduate of the Tri-City School of Preaching and then went to their third year program as well at, and dealing with apologetics. Also a graduate from East Tennessee State University. He is a young man and uh, we that's why I assigned him this topic uh, in dealing with young people and know that he's going to do an excellent job in dealing with that subject. It's good to be with you here in Pensacola. Appreciate the uh, elders and Brother Michael for the invitation to be here. It's good to see some brethren that uh, have seen since February at Spring, Texas. and. While I was there, and while they were there, they got to hear me talk about my wife April a whole lot, and uh, many of them get to see why now. She was able to come down with me, and she's a, a great woman, and I, God has truly blessed me with her, and uh, it's wonderful to be able to travel with her. Building better young people is this morning's topic. The Church of Christ is in dire need of members who are spiritually mature who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between both good and evil. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Sadly, it is the case that many who initially obey the gospel plan of salvation have been added to the Lord's body, simply sit idle, rather than growing. The church, therefore, has reaped the consequences of that inaction. Many are willing... And many are satisfied to follow men that have preached for a long time rather than going by the evidence. Instead of examining the facts for themselves, the future strength of the church is dependent upon how well our young people are prepared to serve God faithfully. It's extremely fitting that in a lectureship entitled Building or Dealing with Building, that there would be a discourse on our young people. Generally speaking, when we think of building, we think of the future. And when we think of the future, we think of our youth. And so building and young people are intertwined. And it is a privilege for me to be able to speak on this topic this morning. Building better young people. First of all, I want us to look at the fact that building better young people has to start at home. I know this is one of the topics this week, and so I won't deal a great, uh, great deal of time on that. I don't want to step on that speaker's toes. But building better young people has to start in the home. Though many agree with that statement, very, very few actually follow it. <laughs> very few actually seem to believe it to be true. The denominational world uh, reaches out to young people in many different ways, trying to attract them by offering fun and games and entertainment, and such will, uh, worldliness is creeping into the church and has attacked some congregations already. And though God's elders are responsible for feeding the flock, 1 Peter 5 verse 2, and that includes our young people, our youth, the elders are not babysitters. 
and the elders are not commanded to run three ring circuses for entertainment. And they are not commanded to have activities so that our young people are, can enjoy fun and games. Not only is it not the role of the elders to raise children, it's not the role of the government either. The responsibility of teaching and training our young people lies at home with two parents, a father and a mother, scripturally married. Mrs. Bill Clinton, who is running for president, wrote a book called It Takes a Village. Brethren, it doesn't take a village. It doesn't take a village to raise a child. It takes two God-fearing parents who are willing to follow God's inspired Word. Elders can assist the home by offering Bible classes and Bible materials and opportunities for spiritual fellowship and growth. But the onus of raising children is in the home. That's where God put it. In order to build better young people, we need to build better homes. Then, That's where we need to put our emphasis is on building a better home. The psalmist said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalm 127 verse 1. Parents who try to follow any other pattern than that which is given in the Bible, are going to fall short of training their children the way God wants them to. The Apostle Paul describes the God-ordained home in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through the end of the chapter, and then Ephesians 6, verses 1 through verse 4. And I'm sure the, uh, the speaker's teaching, teaching on building in the home is going to deal with that. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we read of the command that God gave to parents and we can indirectly take this today because it is certainly uh, for us as well. Verses 1 through verse 9 of Deuteronomy 6. These are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, keep all His statutes and His commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Now notice, these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children. Shalt talk of them when thou sittest in the house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, on the gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware to thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou did not build. God has put the onus of training children in the hands of parents. And there are some parents who believe that their role is simply getting their children dressed into services on Sunday morning. And maybe not even then. <laughs> maybe later in the day on Sunday. God entreated His people to teach their children while they were sitting, while they were standing, walking, lying down, pretty much all the time. God implores parents to keep His Word ever before their eyes. As frontless between their eyes or on the post of the house, parents are to put that much emphasis on training their children in the ways of God. Preachers and elders and Bible class teachers play an important role in training children. So don't get me wrong. They play an important role and they can help parents, aid parents in building better young people. But young people are molded in the home. There's no way that we can build better young people if we don't teach them that there's consequences for error either. 
The only way we can build better young people is to teach them that there is consequences for wrongdoing. Children who can get away with just about anything in the home are trained that they are not to have any respect for authority. And when children are trained that they don't need to have respect for authority, it's going to be very hard to teach them the authority of the Bible and fear of God. And if children are not taught respect for authority in the home, they will eventually do that which is right in their own eyes. Judges 21, verse 25. And also think of this, if young people are not taught that God requires obedience and that there is punishment for disobedience, then how are we going to train our children to be prepared for the day of judgment? Isn't that what it's all about? Training our children to be prepared to serve God so that on the day of judgment they can go to heaven? Isn't that our desire? Well, how can we train our children to be prepared to stand before God if they don't know that there's consequences for disobedience. And so that is ultimately our reason and should be our desire for preparing them to be ready to stand before God. And so first of all this morning, building better young people has to start at home. But secondly, building better young people means that we need to teach them a proper fear of God. And I... Uh, hit on that just a minute ago. We need to teach them to fear God and keep His commandments. You know, if this one statement in the Bible were instilled into people from their very youth, there would be very, very few empty pews as they grow up. There would be great rejoicing in heaven. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments for this is the whole duty of of man. Ecclesiastes 12.13 Brother David Brown wrote, Every commandment God has ever given man is because God loves him. He knows what is best for man. Therefore, to submit to the commandments of God is to bask in the love of God and to keep one's heart from sin. You know, there are people who believe that imploring individuals to keep commandments and laws is unloving. But it is love that gave us those laws. And it is love that will allow us to submit to them. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. Young people can be strengthened and edified in regards to fearing God and keeping His commandments when we look at these four major needs. And to be honest with you, these four major needs can be applied to adults as well. But I wanted to look at these and tailor these towards our youth. First of all, respect. Secondly, industry. Third, the need to choose our friends wisely. And fourth, the need to discern between good and evil. First of all, respect. Respect is defined by Webster's Dictionary as the special esteem or consideration in which one holds another person or thing. The word esteem means to have a high opinion of, to hold in high value. If we're going to build better young people, we need to make sure that they understand respect. They need to respect first and foremost, uh, well, first of all, themselves. If young people aren't taught to respect themselves, they're going to get into a lot of trouble. Young people should respect themselves because they are created in the image of God. Genesis 1, verse 26 and verse 27. They're not, they're not evolved from any uh, lower animal. They are created in the image of God. Young people should respect themselves because uh, once they are taught and they come to a knowledge of the truth and can obey the Gospel, that they belong to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 22 through verse 24. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, all he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men, brethren. Let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. And so being obedient to God's laws and 
ultimately obeying His plan to save, which adds Him to the church, allows Him to be bought with the price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Young people should respect themselves because they're bought with the price when they obey the Gospel. Now why do we want to put so much emphasis on young people respecting themselves? Well, if they respect themselves, they'll keep their bodies pure. We can think of many different sins and many different temptations that young people face which defile the body. You know, growing up should be fun. It's a time to enjoy uh, your youth. And there's nothing wrong with young boys and young girls beginning to like each other and to enjoy each other's company. But the Bible is very clear that a mature relationship between boys and girls, between men and women, can only come between a qualified man and a qualified woman who are scripturally married in the eyes of God. And if young people are taught and trained to respect themselves, they will keep their bodies pure as God would have them to do. Also, we can read that drunk driving is the leading single cause of death between of the ages of 15 to 24 years old. Drunk driving kills many of our young people. 14 teenagers die every day. And 360 are injured every day in crashes where alcohol is involved. According to the Lung Association, the American Lung Association, smoking-related diseases claim an estimated 440,000 Americans every year. Cigarettes contain 69, at least 69, known cancer-causing uh, chemicals. And so the bottom line is that we need to train our young people to respect themselves, to keep their bodies pure. And in the world, they're going to be taught that these things are cool. And this is what everybody is doing. And they need to be taught to respect themselves so they'll keep their bodies pure and they'll know that smoking and drinking ain't cool. So we need to train them to respect themselves. We also need to train our young people to respect others. If we're going to build better young people, they need to respect other people. The Bible teaches us that we're, to, that we're commanded to respect our parents, Ephesians 6, 1-3. through 3. And we're commanded to respect our friends and our neighbors, Matthew 19, 19. Building better young people also necessitates and demands a respect towards God and His laws. And that's first and foremost. If we'll train our young people to respect God and His laws, all these other things will fall into place. All these other things will fall into place. A proper fear and a proper reverence for God will lead us to do that which is right. If we respect God, we will do as He commands. If young people learn to respect God, they won't have any problems going to God. We will desire to serve Him. And so young people need to be built to respect. Also, our young people need to be trained to be workers. They need to be industrious. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and verse 16, the Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We need to redeem the time. We need to make the most of our opportunities in our days. And if we'll train our young people from their very youth up, as they grow older, they will be industrious. They will be workers. They won't be sitting idle. And if our young people are trained to be workers when they obey the Gospel of Christ, they'll be workers in the church. And that's what we need. We need workers in the kingdom. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Jesus said, Pray ye therefore of the Lord of the harvest that He would send forth laborers into His harvest. Luke 10 and verse 2. 
We started out this lesson by talking about the fact that many of our members are not working. They're sitting idle. They're not growing. We need to train our young people to be workers so that when they get of an age, they'll already have that instilled in them. Thirdly, they need to choose their friends wisely. Isn't that go for all of us? We all need to choose our friends wisely. You never grow up to an age where you don't have to choose your friends wisely. My dad always used to say, if you run with the dogs, you'll smell like them. And, and he said that a lot. <laughs> I don't know if he meant I stunk or what. but uh, The idea was, if you get involved with a group of people who are doing bad things, even if you're not guilty, you'll have some of that guilt connected to you. You'll have some of that stink on you. Because you've been running around with them. We need to train our children to choose their friends wisely to keep good company. Be not deceived. Evil communications or evil companionships corrupt good morals. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Sometimes, even adults, we try to have friendships and think that our faith is strong enough not to be soiled, but your reputation can be soiled. And don't, don't put yourself up so high to think that you can't fall. Because you can. And if you hang around with it long enough, you'll begin to stink. Just like those you hang around with. Building better young people necessitates a willingness to choose friends wisely. And it only takes a little leaven, the Bible teaches, to mess up the whole lump. Right? Galatians 5, verse 9. It only takes one bad influence to destroy a good young person's life. One bad influence can destroy a good young person's life. Train our children to choose their friends wisely. And lastly, in regards to this particular point, they need to be taught to discern between good and evil. You know, that seems like it just makes common sense, but the world is not full of common sense today. Hebrews 5 verse 14 tells us that we need to be able to discern between good and evil. The prophet Isaiah said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's exactly what the world is doing today. And that's what they're trying to do to our young people. Today's society, there are worldly and ungodly influences that are trying to persuade our young people that there's no such thing as evil. That good and evil are just what you make them. The postmodernists are claiming that you can't know what truth is, and therefore you can't know really what good is and what bad is. You just have to come up with your own scale of how good or bad something is. Having individuals decide for themselves, that's humanism. Placing humans as God in the place of the role of God. If we're going to build our use to be stronger, they must know that truth is absolute and you can attain it. The world may tell you that you can't know what truth is, but the Bible says you can. John 8, 31 and 32. They must know that truth is not dependent upon circumstances or any situations. Truth is because it came from God and God is. Knowing truth can only come from hearing and studying the Word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. And so we need to, in order to build better young people, we need to train them to fear God and keep His commandments. And the four major points I chose this morning in that regard was to teach them respect, to be industrious, to choose their friends wisely, and to discern between good and evil. And the last point this morning, in order to build better young people, we need to teach them to obey God rather than men. Building better young people exacts the need to put God and His will first above all else. In the face of persecution and imprisonment and potential death, Peter and the other apostles stood firm and defied the religious hierarchy of the day and proclaimed, we ought or we must obey God rather than men. 
Acts 5, verse 29. There are many members of the church who are unwilling to practice church discipline because they think it might hurt someone's feelings. Some Christians are willing to overlook the sins of an individual because he is a friend. As was pointed out in last evening's lectures, that's the most unloving thing we can do. To allow friends to die in their sin without trying to help them out of it. The most unloving thing we can do. And don't think that we'll get away with that. God will hold us accountable if we don't try to help our brethren out of error. Young people need the purpose in their hearts right now. Early in their life. You know, sometimes uh, people think, well, we need to teach our children, uh, you know, to color and to do these things right now, and then we'll teach them these things later. No, they need to be taught now. We need to, we need to teach them. Obviously, you have to teach them in a different way. They can only soak in so much, but you've got to teach them now. If you wait too long, somebody else will have taught them something. And it won't be good. They need to be taught early in their life to purpose in their heart that no matter what happens, that even if it were to separate them from their parents, they need to follow God. Always. And that's going to be tough if they don't learn it early. They need to be trained that early. God uh, warned. Jesus warned us. A man's foes can be those of his own house. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36 and verse 37. Train them now to put God first no matter what. Men who want to keep or desire to gain popularity, they'll make excuses and they make pseudo-defenses for individuals who have gone off into apostasy because of the pressure that is placed upon them by their fears. Don't think peer pressure just happens to kids. Peer pressure affects everyone. And in this manner, many youths come under fire by peer pressure. And just like many of our brethren today, they're doing, they will do things that they never thought they'd ever do. Peer pressure will lead young people and adults to say things that they never thought they'd ever say. To do things they never thought they'd ever do. To defend things they never thought they'd defend. Peer pressure is a very, very powerful source. And it will lead to destruction. Young people today face peer pressure to incorporate themselves in deeds that would have never been imagined just a generation ago. There are individuals in this audience who can probably th look at the temptations that our young people are facing and say, we never had to face such temptations. Not to say that the temptations that, that your generation grew up with weren't strong and didn't have to be overcome. But there are things being done today and being said today that our young people are having to face that a generation ago would have never happened. You know, I, it's been, uh, I'm a young man, you know, and I, I've got to grow up a little more myself. I've got a lot of long way to go. But being a young man, I can even remember back being in elementary school and never having heard the word gay. Didn't even know what it meant. I mean, in the sense that the world says it today in regards to homosexuality. That wasn't very long ago that you just didn't know what that meant. That word wasn't used. Today, it's a badge of honor. And it's almost a, uh, uh, a group that needs more rights than others. And so those things uh, have changed between one generation to the next. That was uh, not talked about. It was a shame. And now many take pride in that sin. And there are many, many other temptations that are in that vein. Many, many others. The 
determining at an early age to obey God rather than men will be of great importance in the effort to build better young people. You know, many here probably remember when you were in elementary school or junior high school and you went in and you memorized a Bible verse in school. I know my dad has told me about those days. Now the ACLU has come in and said that's uh, against a constitutional uh, statement that doesn't exist. The separation of church and state was made up by some liberal because it's not in the Constitution. The Constitution says that the government will not make a nation or a national religion. But it doesn't say that God doesn't have anything to do with our nation. The Constitution just doesn't say that. Your children will be taught that. though. Your children will be taught that church and state are to be separated. It's just not there. A generation ago, well, even when I was in elementary school, not too long ago, we did the Pledge of Allegiance in schools. That's gone. Anything that has the name God in it is going to be taken away from public if we don't be careful. And that's the reason we need to train our young people to be ready for these things. And training obviously begins in the home. And we as members of the body of Christ can do our part as well to help in building those young people. The earlier one can distinguish the difference between their earthly ties and the tie they have to God. Their earthly relationships in, re in reference to their spiritual relationship with God the covenant they will make with God, the better they will be able to face these temptations in the future. And the better opportunity they will have not to give in to peer pressure and not to be led away from the truth. And so this morning, to build better young people, we need to teach them to obey God rather than men. It is imperative that Christians realize the need to build and to strengthen our own faith. How are we going to build and strengthen the faith of our young people if our faith is weak? If our children see us wavering? If our young people are not sure where we stand? How hard will it be to train them to be defenders of the truth? to stand in the paths of righteousness. If we're going to train our young people to be stronger, then we ourselves have to build ourselves. We have to strengthen our own faith. And so this morning, as we begin to wrap up this lesson, in order to build better young people, we need to build up ourselves. We need to strengthen ourselves. We need to be better examples, stronger examples, compassionate example. It's imperative that we realize the need to build and strengthen the faith of young people. But in order to do that, we need to build and strengthen our own faith. Building better young people entails faithful parents training and admonishing their children and planning into the minds of youth the appropriate respect for God. Proper authority the cognizance to turn to God and not from God in an attempt to seek praise from men. And lastly, as we teach our young people to be stronger, we need to teach them that living a life of faithfulness is just that. It's not a one-time event. They need to live it for the rest of their lives. Our young people need to be able to endure. They need to go to the end with us. And that's the reason we need to strengthen our own faith. Paul exhorted the young man Timothy, Be strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. Thou therefore endure hardness 
as a good soldier of Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. We need to train our young people that they need to endure. Don't give up. Keep fighting as a good soldier for the Christ. Don't let the bad days get you down. Endure to the end. Spiritual building is a never-ending project. Never ends. There's never a time when we can say we are finished building. Young people will grow old and they'll teach the youth. They'll teach those who are younger than they. They'll teach the next generation those things which have been committed to them. And they will tell those children, teach these things to others. Young people will never get to an age where there is no need for growth and building. But the time to build is now. And for our young people, we remember the preacher in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. The time to build, young people, is now. And the time for us to encourage our young people to build is now. Thank you very much.